Now, originally in this video, I was only gonna talk about the five top networking certifications that you should get in 2021. But I think even before we discuss which certifications are important, we need to discuss if certifications are actually important and actually valid. And in this video, I'm gonna give you my opinion. There's gonna be some hard talk in this video, so please don't get offended. I'm gonna give you my thoughts based on my years of experience. So a lot of this is my opinion based on my personal experience and based on what I see in the industry. You may or may not agree with me. Put in the comments below what you think. So let me know if you agree with what I'm saying or if you disagree, and that's fine. One thing I've learned the older I get is people have different opinions and there's no I'm right, you wrong necessarily for a lot of situations. It's often not just one option or another option. You often have multiple choices and things aren't always as clear cut as we might want them to be. So my experiences may be different to yours and it may vary from country to country. Okay, so let's not waste any time. Are certifications important in 2021? And I would say they are. I think certifications are still very valid and very important. And I'm gonna give you some reasons for that. The first one is certifications can get you past gatekeepers or get you to the interview. Think about it, if I'm looking to hire someone, and I actually did this recently, I hired someone to support students on my courses. And the first thing I did was go onto a job site and type in CCMP, because in this example, I wanted someone with CCMP level knowledge. Having a CCMP differentiates you from someone with no certifications. Having a CCNA differentiates you from someone with no certifications. If I'm looking for someone or a company is looking for someone, one of the easiest ways to filter or sift through resumes or CVs is to say, this is the minimum criteria. If you have this certification, I can assume that you have a certain level of knowledge. So I wanted CCMP level knowledge. So rather than trying to go through thousands and thousands and thousands of resumes, to try and find out if someone actually had a certain amount of experience, it's a lot quicker and a lot easier to just set a minimum bar, if you like, or a minimum level. You need to have CCNA level knowledge or you need to have CCMP level knowledge. If you've got a CCMP, I can safely assume that you should have a certain amount of knowledge. But as a lot of us realize in the real world, some people, and unfortunately this is true, there are people who have CCMPs who don't actually have CCMP level knowledge. They've used brain dumps or other ways to pass an exam, so they have the certification, but they don't have the knowledge. But those are the kind of people that you're gonna find out in an interview. So I think certifications are really important because they get you to the interview or they get you to the first stage of getting hired. Now, a lot of companies will have a trial period. So you'll be hired, but you're on probation, if you like, for the first three months. So that is a way for the company to actually verify or test that you know what you say you know. So a lot of companies will use this initial 90 days as an example to verify that you know what you say you know, and they have the option to fire you or terminate your employment or let you go if they feel that you don't know what you said you know, or you don't fit into the company culture. So they'll use that initial period to verify your skills and verify your knowledge. So when I was hiring someone to support students, one of the first criteria is, do they have a certain amount of technical skills? And during the interview, one of my team members was quizzing the people based on their technical knowledge, but that wasn't all. They were also quizzed on the ability to answer questions in English. So English may not be their first language, but we needed someone who could write well in English and communicate well in English. So during the interview process, we verified, did they actually know what they said they know? and do they have soft skills, which are also really, really important in today's world. So the first important reason to get a certification is it gets you past the recruiters. It gets, it gets you past the gatekeepers, basically. It gets you to the interview. When scanning job applicants, recruiters or companies may just say, anyone who doesn't have a CCNA, as an example, won't even be looked at. Their CV will be just set aside. So a reason to get a certification is to get 
past the gatekeepers. First big reason. Now that's for jobs, but I think for yourself, there's another big reason to get a certification. I'm, I've been in this game a long time. It's amazing. I just looked it up today. I passed my CCNA exam over 20 years ago. That just makes me feel old, but I passed my CCNA many, many years ago, and I've seen a whole bunch of changes in the industry, but I still see certifications as a way to help you and me learn knowledge. Big tip, you don't know what you don't know. That's one of the big things I learned when I took my CCIE as an example. I've seen this so many times. I've trained many, many people over the years. And please don't take this the wrong way, but this is my experience and my opinion once again. I've seen this so many times. At CCNA level, a lot of people say they knew, they're hungry for knowledge. They don't assume that they know a lot. But when they come on CCMP courses, and this happened a lot when I was training face-to-face, some people assumed that they had arrived. They knew everything. Big mistake, because the level of knowledge that's required for a CCIE is a big jump from CCMP courses. So I'd have these guys come on courses and they would try and explain to me about BGP as an example or about OSPF. And you very quickly realize that you don't know what you don't know. The more you learn, the more you realize that there is more to learn. And don't be despondent by that. Just realize that that gives you an opportunity because the world constantly changes. As an example, two years ago, Cisco didn't have a DevNet track, but they now have a DevNet track. So if you want to get into network automation and network programmability, Cisco have now created a track to teach you from zero basically to getting a certain level of knowledge. They've given you a clear path to knowledge. So one of the big advantages of certifications, I think, is it gives you a clear track to go from somewhere to somewhere. So DevNet Associate, I start with no knowledge or very little knowledge, and afterwards I have associate level knowledge of development topics. CCNA, I start with very little knowledge. Once I get my CCNA, I have foundational knowledge of networking. So it gives you a clear path. Another big reason to take certifications or go through the certification process is you are forced to learn stuff that you don't like. Think about it. You may enjoy routing protocols. I personally prefer routing protocols over technologies such as spanning tree. I prefer layer three over layer two, It's just what I enjoy. So I'd rather talk about BGP or OSPF And it's funny, I had a conversation with someone recently and they called me a nerd. So, David, how can you be excited about BGP? Well, it's for me, it's interesting. So I enjoy BGP, but I don't enjoy spanning trees so much. But by going through a certification, I'm forced to learn about spanning tree. I'm forced to learn about different types of spanning tree, as well as the routing protocols that I enjoy. So basically, you are forced to learn a certain amount of work. I had someone on Twitter just yesterday tag me and say, I'm going through David's course. I, I, I'm not enjoying binary. And someone else said they don't enjoy hexadecimal. Yeah, unfortunately, sometimes you have to go through a bit of pain to learn foundational knowledge so that you can get where you want to be. As they say in the gym, no pain, no gain. So you have to go through some pain to get somewhere. And a certification gives you this path, if you like, or this track forcing you to go through certain steps to reach a certain level of knowledge. You Remember, you don't know what you don't know. These tracks have been designed by people who have been in the industry for a long time. They've learned over the years that this kind of knowledge is important to learn. This kind of knowledge is important to learn. So that's going to go into the curriculum. Now, it's always easy, as they say, to throw stones. It's always easy to criticize. It's very difficult to create. Very easy to criticize, very difficult to create. So they don't always get it right. But I think the CCNA has been around for so long that it is one of those foundational certifications that you want to get. And it's actually my top certification for someone starting out in the industry. If you want to learn networking, get your CCNA. It will give you a very good foundation in networking. And I'll talk about this in a moment because I'm sure a lot of people are going to say, David, you are a Cisco fanboy. You, What about Juniper? What about HPE? And unfortunately, a lot of people forget that I'm old. I've been in this game a long time. I have actually worked with other vendors, but I'll give you my opinion in a moment about why I think a CCNA 
is definitely the certification to get rather than other certifications if you're starting out. And it's not just because I'm a Cisco fanboy, it's just what I see in the industry. But again, you're more than welcome to disagree with me. Another big hot topic is degrees. And again, don't be insulted by what I'm gonna say now. This is life, and life is often not fair. This is hard talk. If you're an employer in the United States, or you're an employer in the United Kingdom, and this is actually my personal experience. So let's say you're an employer in the United Kingdom, and you wanna employ someone. Would you trust someone with a degree from the University of Oxford, University of Cambridge, perhaps Harvard, would you take someone who's got one of those degrees or would you take someone who has a degree from Africa? Let's be honest, what would you do? Candidate one, Oxford or Cambridge degree. Candidate two, degree from the University of South Africa or University of Nigeria. What would you choose? Let's be honest, there are universities and then there are universities and then there are universities. If you've got an Ivy League degree, as they say, if you went to Oxbridge, so in other words, Oxford or Cambridge, or some of the top universities in the UK, or MIT, or Harvard, or one of those universities, you have a much better chance than someone like me who's got a university degree from the University of South Africa. Degrees are not created equal. That is just the way life works. Proven by the metrics in the UK. There's this big drive in the UK to try and diversify people in the universe in Oxbridge universities because it they say that it goes to just a certain group of people. Now I'm not going to get into the politics. That is just life. So let me give you my personal experience. I moved from South Africa to the UK. What do you think opened the doors for me? Was it my degree or was it my CCIE? And the obvious answer is it was my CCIE. If you get a certification from a company like Cisco, Cisco are certifying that you have this knowledge of CCIE as an example, that is valid no matter which country you go to. So if I go to the US or I go to the UK or I go to South Africa or I go to Singapore, I have a CCIE. CCIE is certified by Cisco. That in my opinion carries a lot of weight. It opens a lot of doors. Now. I know what's happening in the industry. Unfortunately, there's been a lot of cheating in the industry. It's really sad what's happened, how people are cheating and they are devaluing a lot of certifications, unfortunately. Unfortunately, in today's world, people try and circumvent the process, circumvent the rules, but in a lot of cases, they're gonna be caught out. So, so I've often heard this in the UK. They will hire someone, and this person has a CCMP certification as an example, but they don't know how to configure IP addresses on a Cisco router. So they don't last very long. But does that mean that you shouldn't go for certifications? And I would say you still need to, because how do you get past the gatekeepers? Number one, how do you get past the gatekeepers? Number two, how do you learn what you don't know? So you wanna go from zero to being a network engineer. Cisco have done this really well where they've got CCNA, CCMP, CCIE, and other certifications. You've got a clear path of where to go. So you know that if you get your CCNA, you have a certain level of knowledge. CCMP, you have a certain level of knowledge, CCIE. It gives you a path to study, forces you to study certain materials that you won't study, gives you a clear path, and it allows employers to easily say that if I want a certain level of knowledge, so you must have a basic understanding of spanning tree, basic understanding of routing protocols, I'm gonna look for someone with a CCNA. If you need more advanced knowledge, so you need to understand SD-WAN as an example, I'm gonna look for someone with a CCMP with the SD-WAN concentration. It makes it much easier for employers to find, hopefully, the right person than just having a thousand C resumes or a thousand CVs and then trying to work out based on their experience who has what. Another thing about certifications is we as humans like to be rewarded. Look at my kids. I give them a book to try and learn a topic. They, they hate it perhaps, but give them a game on the iPad where they are rewarded for completing a set of tasks and they love it and they want to do more and more and more. So Gamifying education is a great way to impart knowledge. Rather than just boring steps, if we gamify a, a learning process, people tend to learn better. And in a way, we've got that with certifications. Think about it. You have a list of tasks that you need to do. 
Writing the tasks down is not very rewarding, but ticking off a task is really rewarding. So in the same way, getting a CCNA is rewarding. You get an acknowledgement, you get a badge of the work that you've done. It's a great reward. You can shout about it on social media. You can share it with people that you have completed a certification. Go to the next certification, tick it off. Gives you a reward. It's very rewarding to complete something. And I think that's another reason why certifications are great. Rather than just taking a Python book and reading it, getting no reward at the end, if you get your Cisco DevNet associate certifications, you get a reward. You have completed this. Cisco are certifying that you have a certain level of knowledge. So that's another great reason for getting a certification is a company like Cisco are saying that you have a certain level of knowledge rather than you just saying, I have that level of knowledge. So another party, a trusted party, the vendor of Cisco equipment, Cisco themselves, are saying that you have a certain level of knowledge. And I don't wanna just make this a Cisco video. What about Juniper? If you're a Juniper person and you get a Juniper certification, Juniper are certifying that you have a certain level of knowledge if you get the associate certification. Same with HPE. So HPE will say, or Aruba will say that you have a certain level of knowledge when you get their certifications. Now there's another big reason to get certifications. Companies such as Cisco or HPE as an example will give Cisco partners discount on their equipment and give them options to sell equipment only if they have a certain number of certified individuals on staff. So as an example, they'll need a certain number of CCNAs, certain number of CCMPs or certain number of CCIEs. And based on that, they can get silver status or gold status or whatever the Cisco partner status is that they're trying to achieve. They have to have a certain number of certified individuals on staff to get Cisco partner status. So think about that. If you and someone else are applying to work at a Cisco partner, and everything else is equal, same experience, same knowledge, et cetera, but you have a CCMP and they don't, and the Cisco partner needs a CCMP to get a certain status with Cisco, in other words, get partner status at a certain level, get a certain amount of discounts, it's more likely that they're going to hire you than the other person if everything else is equal. So having certified individuals on staff makes monetary sense to a lot of companies, and think about it. If a company can get extra discount from Cisco because they have a certain number of certified individuals on staff, it's in their best interest to hire certified individuals. So big reason to get certified is it often opens up doors at Cisco Partners. I've experienced that personally multiple times in my life. I've had doors open for me because my CCIE was needed for partner status or was needed for something. So I was employed to work for the company for my knowledge and my skills, my experience, et cetera, but my CCIE sealed the deal, if you like. They hired me because they would get discounts and they would get me at the same time. So double bonus for the company, if you like. So big reason to get certified is it can open up doors with partners such as Cisco partners or other vendor partners. Okay, so there are probably many other reasons to get certifications. The video, however, is getting too long, so I'm gonna end it here. In a separate video, I'll talk about the five top certifications for networking. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it's helped you. If you did, please like it. Please consider subscribing to my YouTube channel and clicking on the bell to get notifications. I'm David Bumble. I wanna wish you all the very best. Cause we both did